You must have ducked under the radar screen. Yes. I want it found. Well, we've done pretty well. Moon base, we've destroyed three, and two have been shot down in the other. One unlocated UFO is one UFO too many. Find it. This your car, miss? Yes. Not a very clever way to park. I don't remember. Anyone with you? No. No. Could I see your driver's license, please, miss?
free to control. Red Sports, registration B Bravo M Mike W Whiskey 189. Would you get out of the car, please, miss? What? Why? Get out of the car, please. Look, I don't understand. I was just driving home when you stopped. That's a stupid thing to try, miss. I think you better give me the keys. Give me the keys, please. Don't give me a hard time, miss. Commander Straker. Is Colonel Lake around? Well, uh, where is Colonel Foster? No, no, don't bother. Just spread it around. I'm on my way in, will you? I find it helps efficiency. What's the problem? I wonder if you could give me a lift. Why? What's the matter? My car. Doesn't seem to want to start. Well, I, uh... I live just a little way down this road. If you could, uh... All right. Jump in. Thank you very much. I'm, uh, sorry to trouble you like this. Oh, forget it. It's no trouble. Oh, you're an American. That's right. Boston. Oh. I find most Americans are very, um, mechanically minded. Oh? I'm not, I'm afraid. Well, take my card. It's probably just a, a lead or wire or something like that. Uh, what is your line, Mr... Clark. Daniel Clark. And that's what I am. A bank clerk. I pride myself on being a good judge. I'd say you were some kind of, um, executive. Yes, I guess you could say that. Oil? Motion pictures. Oh, films. Oh, that must be a very exciting life. Oh, um, anywhere along here will be just fine. I live over there, just ah. beyond the wood. Well, there we are, Mr. Clark. Uh, thank you very much. 
Don't mention it. No trouble at all. I appreciate. What's the matter? What's wrong? Commander Straker's car, sir. Where? Three kilometers from Junction 14. Does it feel? Like it's just been shaken by an angry orangutan. Well, I'm afraid you will live, Commander. Thank you very much, Doctor. Ah, Paul, what have we got? Daniel Frederick Clark, age 44, works in a bank, married with two children. Nothing else? No criminal record. Not even a uh, traffic indictment, nothing. A solid, law-abiding citizen, uh, Mr. Average. We'll find out more when we pick him up. Well, Mr. Average threw me across the car like a rubber doll. Yes, there are certain psychiatric conditions that can impart tremendous physical strength for brief periods. Tensions, stresses of one kind or another build up and uh, finally explode. Maybe you should take a few days off. Morning, sir. No, I'm fine. How are the new interceptor pilots shaping up on moon base, Paul? How soon should they be ready? Well, they should be ready in a month. A month? Near six weeks. Thank you, Lieutenant. Mm. Colonel Foster, I want you to read that. What is it? An ultimatum. Notice is hereby given that unless the terms here with are... First, the Fairfield Tracker Station, and then Skydiver 3 will be destroyed. And then Shadow Control and Commander Straker. Unless Shadow ceases all operation. Surrender? Where'd you get it? Daniel F. Clark must have slipped it into my coat. These conditions, moon base to be evacuated, all skydivers to surface. Well, if Clark did write this, he knows a hell of a lot about our organization. I want a security check on all shadow installations. Get me a line link to all skydiver captains. Yes, sir. Put moon base on yellow alert. And while we're about it, we'll have a little security drill right here. In 30 minutes. This is control. I knew an old police captain once, Paul. He used to get 100 crank letters a week. The one he ignored was the one that killed him. Get on to the Fairfield Commander. They're first on the list. Yes, sir. Someone out there. Get some men out of the fence. You men, come with me. You can take the other section. Bring that chief over here. Over there. Stay where you are. On the ground. Move! Right, on your feet. Up. Come on. Hands over your head. 
Get to the jeep. Move. We've got him, sir. We're coming in now. Has he been cleared by security control? Yes, sir. We gave him the works. X-ray, everything. He's clear. Right. Wait outside. What's your name? Well, Clark. Daniel Clark. But I... I seem to be a, a little confused. Mr. Clark, you do realize you've entered a restricted area. No. Are you trying to tell me you didn't see the notices? Notices? No. Do you own a typewriter? No. No, I don't. Oh, I see. Guard! Lock him up somewhere. And get me a security line of control. Listen, I really can't remember how... Just keep walking. Seconds later, an explosive detonation, 417. Well, Captain, you're the expert. Well, I have to admit, I'm baffled. This man Clark is stripped, checked electronically, cleared on all counts. These recorded results show radiation check negative, X-ray negative, biosensors negative. To produce a 417 detonation would take four pounds of our latest explosive. Or two pounds of nitroglycerin. The eye of the explosion seemed to be centered on the main electrical switch panel. Yes, a 10,000 volt input. But if he tried anything there, all he would have done was to blow the main fuses or electrocute himself. At worst, he may have started the fire. Was there anything already on the base that he might have used? No, no explosives of any kind, no. Nuclear material, nothing. You know, in the right conditions, you can make a bomb out of a bag of flour, but not a detonation of this magnitude. Captain, I want you to go down to our naval installation. I'm putting you in command of security on Skydiver 3, the next target. We'll need to take this section down another three meters. We won't be able to get near it till the end of the week. End of the week? What? I said we're behind schedule as it is. Okay, Mr. Mason. I'll need the file on the cost estimates and a copy of that report as soon as it's typed. It should be ready this afternoon. 
Oh, I made the reservations in Geneva. Good. Tickets? In your briefcase, sir, with the traveller's checks and cash. Thank you. That seems to take care of everything. Just finished that uh, report and get me those couple of calls. Yes, sir. And cancel all appointments for me on Friday. I'll speak to the accountant first. Excuse me, sir, I must go. Are you all right? I have to leave. Well, I don't understand. Is anything wrong? I must go at once. You don't feel, feel well. Come and sit down. No! Skydiver 3 was due to sail tomorrow, but I've brought its departure time forward to 2,100 hours tonight. Right, I'll be aboard. I told the captain to remain at sea until further orders. Well, that's a good idea, sir. Once we're mid-ocean, we should be safe enough. Let's hope so. Hey. What do you think you're doing? a striker for you, sir. Right. I just want to check on your departure time, Captain. We'll make 2100 hours all right, sir. Have you uh, searched the ship? Yes, sir. We've been over with electro scanners top to bottom. That's fine. Well, good luck, Captain. Well, there's nothing more we can do except wait. Well, isn't there, Paul? I seem to recall an unlocated UFO. I want it found. Yes, sir. Security. Captain Lawrenson's here. Good. We're expecting him. Captain Lawrenson's here. Good evening, Captain. May I have your pass, please, sir? Thank you, sir. Let me check your case, please, sir. Travelling lights. Fingerprints, please, Captain. Thank you, sir. Well, everything seems to be in order, Captain. Go right ahead, sir. They're expecting you on board.
Get me skydiver. Skydiver. Security here, sir. We have an intruder. Is he armed? No, sir. Right. Sound a general alert. This is an alert. Get me Commander Stinger. Voice print identification. Request voice print identification. You have five seconds. Voice print negative. Well, where is he now? In the voice print trap. Get that submarine out to sea. We'll be underway in a couple of minutes. Clear four and aft, sir. Right. Seven ship to shore umbilicals. Yes, sir. Seven ship to shore umbilicals. Clear the deck and secure hatch. Clear the deck. Yes, sir. Skydiver 3. Yes, How sir. in blazes could one unarmed man cut his way through five centimeters of steel plate doors? Captain on the line, sir. Captain, it's highly probable that you have a saboteur aboard. Well, if there is, sir, he can only be up top. We can handle it. Yes, I'm sure you can, Captain. Well, keep me informed. Break out the small arms. Yes, sir. Sir, on the conning tower. Out of the question. But, sir, we can open the hatch and rush him. I said no, Captain. Have you reached the safe dive area? Yes, sir, just about. Then take her down. Sir? I said submerge. Commander, there's a man up there. One unarmed man. Captain, I gave you a direct order. Take it down. Dive, dive, dive! Flight one and two.
did that to his hand? I don't know. Let's take a look around. Paul? Clem Mason, 35, construction manager. Suddenly walked off the site yesterday afternoon. No record. Another Mr. Average. It doesn't add up. He kills Lauritsen, tries to get through the security net, is discovered, gets caught in the voice print trap, and then gets out through tungsten steel doors. It's also been established that he was unarmed and had nothing on his person. Right. He gets aboard Skydiver 3, a ship that's been checked with the most sophisticated electronic devices we have, and yet... Minutes later, it's blown out of the water. Well, you said he was a Mr. Average, but no normal man could have clawed his way out of those doors. So he possessed, or was possessed by, some superhuman force. Oh. In place of superhuman, try alien. And you are next on the list, Commander. More important, so is this control center. But feed every scrap of information we have into the computer. Every fact, no matter how insignificant. Bend the program if necessary. Take a look. Yeah, that could be something. I'll check the details. Come in. Morning, sir. Miss Simmons. I didn't expect you. I didn't expect me. I want to make sure you catch that plane. Well, we've been looking for you. I, I contacted your parents. Are you all right? Oh, fine, sir. Why? Miss Simmons, leave all that. Yesterday afternoon, you... Yes, sir. I think I ought to call someone. A doctor, or...? I wouldn't do that if I were you. Yes, that's right. Immediate. We may have something. Good. Clark and Mason live in the same area. The computer's come up with a police report that could fit. Two nights ago, a patrolman was brutally murdered and left on the side of the road. The police surgeon states that extraordinary, almost inhuman strength was used to strangle him. Now, the time of death was put at 2200 hours. The patrolman reported in at 2154. He was checking on a car apparently abandoned by the roadside. We checked the registration of that car, and it belongs to Miss Linda Simmons, who lives less than a mile from Mason. Uh, we have her address, and we know where she works. Well, it's the best lead we've got so far. Let's go to work. Got anything for a size A problem? Deluxe version? The stomach ups, it's easier to cure. Yes, I'm sure it would be. Doctor, you said something the other day that stuck in my mind. You were talking about psychiatric conditions, how tensions and stresses can build up in a person until finally... Subject explodes uh, mentally. And physically. Yeah, I have a theory. But I must warn you, it's pretty wild. <laughs> Go ahead, Doctor. Try me. A human body, muscles, brain, operates in a series of... Minute electrical charges flowing around a complex of low-voltage electrical circuits. The nervous system. Sometimes the, the electrical balance is disturbed. Mental disorder. Imagine the situation where, for some reason, the balance swings violently off-center. The body becomes supercharged, like a thundercloud before a storm. If such a charged being could exist, it may be able to draw on all the primitive forces of the universe, attract them to itself. Space, time, light, electrical potential, energy, they're all related. The result... A human bomb. A psycho bomb.
Foster to control. I've just checked Miss Simmer's apartment. She's not there. Can I see your pass? Thank you. Thank you. What happened? A man's been killed. Who did it? We don't know yet, but whoever it was beat his head to a pulp. Miss Simmons? Yes? My name's Paul Foster. That looks very impressive. A couple of nights ago, you were driving back along Route 107. Yes. In this car. Yes. Oh, the police. What about the police? A patrolman stopped me. I still don't know why. I'd like to talk to you about that. OK. Why not? Let's take a walk. Paul, it looks like Miss Simmons is it. She must be considered highly dangerous. Paul? Well, Mr. Foster, you wanted to talk to me? Uh, yes, um... How about some lunch? Well, the UFO has been in the Earth's atmosphere nearly 48 hours. It must move soon before it starts to disintegrate. Let's concentrate the search area here. Yes, sir. Mobiles are moving in now, sir. Good. What about Foster? Still can't contact him. Been in the office at all today? <laughs> How do you know I work in an office? We have our methods. No, my boss is flying out to Geneva. He's a big man. You don't like him? Yes, I think he's sweet. I always call him sir. Look at the fish. There's a big one. It's funny, I feel I've known you a long time. Four hours. Search still negative, sir. Keep them at it. Yes, sir. To all sections, repeat, to all sections, shadow mobiles one and two are proceeding into new search area. Paul? Mm -hmm. Why did you come to see me? I don't know. Maybe it was your personal magnetism. Seriously, why all the questions? Routine. Just routine? There's nothing to worry about. What are you 
do believe me. Don't you, Paul? Don't you, Paul? Don't you, Paul? He's what? Foster is bringing Linda Simmons to the studio. Commander, did you hear what I said? I heard. She is programmed to kill you. Her target is also this control. I'd rather fight that situation on my own terms. When she arrives, take her straight to room 22. Oh, That's all, Colonel. This is Commander Straker to all mobiles and search aircraft. It is imperative, repeat imperative, that the UFO be located as soon as possible. Commander. I can't explain why I did it. I believe she's innocent, but to bring her back here. Forget it, Paul. In the end, it was my decision. Where is she now? In 22. Who's with her? Colonel Lake. Now, don't give me I don't know. I want answers. Why did you kill your boss? I didn't, I didn't. And the patrolman, why? I just don't understand what you told You put me. your hands around his throat and you choked the life out of him. Stop it. You pressed and pressed. Stop it, stop it, please. <laughs> Still can't believe it. That she could cave in a man's skull with her bare hands? A psycho bomb. The ability to call on the potential of the entire universe. But what triggers it off? You found it off. Stay back. That's far enough. I said that's far enough. One step more and I'll fire. Area 4 green, ground radar, have it on positive track. Sky 4 to control, have you felt on radar? How far? In range in three minutes. <laughs> an ultimatum. Surrender. Surrender, Shadow. You know that we can never do that. You have no alternative. High voltage. That's the trigger. The UFO that controls you has been destroyed. Miss Simmons! If you touch those cables... Surrender. Emergency circuits. Linda. You 
Control destroyed. Returning to base. How did you know the Skyfall had got that new thing? I didn't. <laughs>